Yo, welcome homies. Welcome, welcome. Hope everyone's doing good. Benny, F first spelled as frist and furts. Why not spell it a multitude of ways? Jerry, welcome sir. Daniel, just yes indeed. Yes, indeed. I'm going to grab a big glass of water. Morning, Huey. Morning, buddy. Yo, but Kim Possible's got some pretty sweet gadgets. You want me to play Minecraft music? I feel like I'll get copyrighted. Liam, I would love to, but I feel like because I don't have the rights for that. They've took my stream down before for playing some dumb YouTube video, so I probably shouldn't play uh, music like that on there, unfortunately. There's also many more of the Powerpuff Girls. You guys ever noticed how uh, how useless her belt is? Like it's like the most loose thing ever. It's an accessory, basically. Logan says gadgets can't save you from the beat down of the century. <laughs> oh, true. Yeah, Ben, that does uh, being able to buy Reddit gold. True would would allow you to possibly win that fight for sure. Hey, Wendy, welcome, welcome. Hey, Crystal. Crystal says power for girls because they're three. Yeah, yeah. More of them, for sure. Plus, can't they fly? I'm pretty sure they can fly. And shoot, like, laser beams. That seems pretty good. Yo, Cam, welcome. Weigh in on the classic debate here. Who you got? Powerpuff Girls or Kim Possible? We're taking a vote. I've got, uh, hey Paula, let us know, let us know who you got, let's see here, I think uh, Logan went with Powerpuff Girls, Crystal went with Powerpuff Girls, Daniel agreed, Ben is on uh, Team Kim Possible here, Cameron, you don't know freaking Powerpuff Girls, my goodness. I will show you. I will show you here. Let's uh, let's do a little screen share. Where is my mouse? You don't know Kim Possible either. Okay, here we go. Here's the Powerpuff Girls. So 
So these Powerpuff Girls, like, basically, they can, like, fly, shoot lasers. Or maybe they shoot lasers out of their butts. I don't really know. But they can fly around. And they can, like, pretty sure they can, like, join together into this, like, super robot. Or am I thinking of, like, the Power Rangers? I'm not sure. Super robot. So I think they can do that. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like this. They can do, like, a, they kick butt, basically. Um, and, uh, and then Kim Possible, basically, she's like Tomb Raider. She can like, you know, she does like flips and stuff. She like goes on secret missions. She's got a little grappling hook. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot about like her like nerdy sidekick and the mole rat. I didn't forget about the mole rat, but I just forgot about the little nerdy sidekick. But, uh, yeah, basically, basically Kim Possible kicks butt. Um, oh yeah, she's got a flashlight too. But as we were mentioning before, you can clearly see the world's most useless belt. And that is pretty well like, you know, any picture, most useless belt. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, Rufus the mole rat. Remember Rufus? Yeah, Rufus kicked butt. Sometimes Rufus was on roids as well, so that was not ideal. Wait. Is Pierre Maguire Rufus? It's a good question. Anyways. <laughs> when he, your friend in grade one fainted when he saw the Powerpuff Girls? <laughs> what the heck? Hello, Zoe. Welcome, welcome. All right, so now that we know who, who the teams are here, maybe we'll give Kim Possible Rufus and the nerdy guy. I can't remember his name. Uh, because, Ben, he is a naked mole rat. And Cameron's going to vote Powerpuff Girls because Kim is a ginger and ooh. Wow. Do we have any gingers in our class that I should be offended for? Felton's kids are all ginger. Should we be offended for them? Nah, screw it. Hey, Paul, welcome. Happy Friday, Batten. Happy Friday, buddy. <laughs> Log says Powerpuff Girls is whitewash Astro Boy. Oh man. <laughs> is this where anime came from? Naked mole rats have fur? Wow. Today I have learned something new. Let's find out. I probably shouldn't Google the word naked, so let's make sure it's naked mole rat. Oh, those are disgustingly cute. Oh my goodness. Look at those little things. They kind of... Oh, look at that. That is... Ah. I'm sorry, little buddy. Oh, what are you? What is it eating? That's not cheese. That's like a sponge. Eating queen's poops. Poop makes mole rat babies... Mole rats babysit her... I, sorry, I butchered reading there because all of that was so <laughs> new to me. Whoa, is that its ear hole? What the heck? No, look at that next one. Don't look, I mean, don't look. <laughs> oh, man, look at that thing. That is ferocious. Yeah, they do have a little fur. Anyways, I'm going to close this down because it is overwhelming. The reason that those of you are, are popping in right now and you're probably super confused about what is happening in general is because we were talking about Powerpuff Girls or Kim Possible, who would win. And Kim Possible has that Rufus, that naked mole rat. So it looks like Powerpuff Girls won. I'll have to come up with a battle tomorrow. Monday, I mean, that is better than this. Because clearly it's a little one-sided. Logs is the only one. Oh, wait, no, maybe Benny. I can't remember. I think it would know it was Ben. Kim Possible is wrong. Ty says Powerpuff Girls, of course. Of course. I don't know, Rufus is pretty sick, man. I think I'd be just too grossed out and I'd just let him win. All right, so I'm going to do a tendency or team. Uh, so if you've already posted something in chat, I should be able to get you. So those of you that haven't said anything yet, hit me up. Uh, I did see Paula, I saw Logan, I saw Cam. Don't think I saw Max yet, so if you say something, that'd be great. Ming Chen, let me just see. No, not yet. Uh, did I see Daffe? Don't think so. 
Not just yet. Uh, Kyle Note. Paul, yes. Crystal, yes. Uh, no Yalda yet, as far as I'm aware. Izzy said something perfect. David, yeah, he's here. Beauty. Wendy said something early on. Bassett said something, I believe, or is it bat 10? I think it's just batting yet. So Bassett, if you could let me know, buddy. Maybe you already have. I just don't think I saw you, bud. Uh, and while I'm doing this, guys, see if you had any homework uh, questions from last night. I'm just waiting on your questions there. That's the one above the Kim Possible one. So if you've got a question, either teams it to me or ask away. I have one team's message that I'm going to check in a second here. Saw Ty, Lanise, Zoe, awesome. Daniel, Liam, great, fantastic. Uh, Benny was er here early on. He was first, as he said, frist, something like that. Uh, Jerry, I believe you were early on as well. MDZZ, yep, he said you are not first. He believed he was first. It was a good fight there. And Huey Dooby Doo, I believe you're also way up there at the top. You said good morning. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Enjoying the dorm. How's things going? Huey, so I'm missing uh, missing Max, Josh, Kyle, Yalda, and Bassett. So if you guys could let me know, um, that would be fantastic. Beauty. Yeah, Huey, I got you, bud. I got you. So I'm going to mark those guys absent for now. Yeah, what I, I'll do a 40 sub special. Um, I don't know how many subs I have right now. Probably not very many, but uh, yeah, if we if we hit forty, maybe I'll um, I'll cook, I'll, I'll live stream me teaching math while cooking. Oh, I have forty. Crap. Okay, fifty, fifty, fifty. Then cooking the perfect fried egg. I'm gonna screw it up just like my beatboxing. I don't know, something like that. I'll let you guys decide. What do I do if I hit 50? I don't know. Bassett, welcome, buddy. You tricked me with that one, Liam. He's like, what are you going to do? And then I already had it. Bah, wah, 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 wah. Okay, so I've got uh, just missing Max, Josh, Kyle, and Yalda. So if those guys could hit me up. Jerry, you have 20 YouTube accounts? What the heck? Okay, uh, so I'm going to get off the attendance there. Um, what do you guys think from that homework last night? I'm going to get my textbook out. Can you guys get out yours and see? I think some of those questions were kind of hard-ish. Um, hard-ish. I'm just going to check teams here. Oh, somebody messaged me in teams and said uh, that I need to do a, a Rick and Morty and Rick would win. Um I wonder who would win, uh, Morty or Kim Possible. That'd be a better fight. I think Kim Possible would kick his butt. All right. I'm just opening my textbook here, team. That way I can see, because I feel like some of you guys... are um, unsure about what questions you may or may not have. Uh, here we go, where am I? So what did I ask you to do yesterday? I asked you to do Uh, 9 and 10. Uh, was anything from there okay? Were you struggling with some of those? They were actually kind of hard because some of them were like come up with an equation for something, right? Um, which I think is pretty tough. So this one was coming up with transformations, whereas this one here was more like talking about transformations in general, right? So you had to think things through.
I was really talking about a money heist. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, somebody wants me to do 10A, so I can definitely do 10A here. Um, so let's actually just take a, I'm going to take a print screen of this. Print screen. Open it up here. Drop this sucker in. So we're trying to do transformations for the um, the function two to the x, two to the x. Oopsies. Okay, so it'd be awesome uh, if. Uh, oh yeah, money heist. Yeah, I saw so, uh, somebody was saying I should watch that. Is that any good? I see. Is it any good or is it not worth it? A. Uh, and then we're going to have uh, times 2 to the k x minus d and then plus c. A couple quick things. Uh, if you guys remember, c here, that is the equation of the asymptote, right, of that horizontal asymptote. Equation of, and I think you probably can't see where I'm writing, sorry. The asymptote, as you said, it's worth it. Okay. After I'm done marking your math assignments, maybe we'll give it a shot. Part four just came out. Oh, baby. All right, so if we look then, let's go back to our graph. I'm looking here, and I'm just going to draw this in like orange. Looks to me like our asymptote is at y is equal to, if every dot or tick is two, right? Two, four, six. Y is equal to six, right? So that's basically our shift. It looks like it's also been reflected. So I know that we're going to have some sort of, anyways, we'll get to that in a minute, but it looks like we've been shifted up six because you can't move that asymptote unless there's a six. So I know that at least we have this C is equal to six here because that's our shift. Uh, another thing that's going to be kind of decent to think about is I'm going to look at my, um, my Y intercept here and see what's happening every single time we go up a point because that's going to happen. Uh, sorry, that's going to help us. So I'm going to look uh, from uh, a couple nice points. I'm going to look for a nice point. I see a point here, and this is the point one, uh, and that'd be what is that? Negative ten? Is that correct? Two, four, six, eight, ten. So one, and then y is negative ten. Perfect. I'm going to look for another nice point in here. Do I have a nice point? That's a great question. Oof, that's decent. I believe if these all, that's about halfway. So I believe if this is two here, this would be at one. So we'd have the point one, two. Oh, sorry, my bad. This is two negative 10 down here, isn't it? My bad. Two negative ten, uh, and then let's just see what it looks like is happening at zero. I really could not totally predict that y value there, but we should be able to get something similar. We'll just see how we do uh, coming up with this. So, um, sorry, let me just go back to my textbook just so I can fold the. Write an equation for each one. Okay. Oopsies. Sorry, I'm trying to remember how do I... Oh, yeah, there you are. So in terms of our, our value here, right, to go up normally... I'm just thinking about our A value. Normally, 2 to the X, if I was to graph something like this, right, it goes like this. But it's it's pretty clear to me that this thing has been... You know, if we look at this new graph or whatever it is, uh, it's it's going down instead. So it's been reflected like this. So I know that our A has to be negative. A is less than zero to get that, right? I know that A has to be negative here. But I also want to see um, if there's been any stretches from what it normally would be. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at that in a second here. So um, if we look, right, our X value, we're going... Uh, basically, if we look at our table of values here, and I don't really know uh, what this y value is, and I don't want to assume that just yet. I think it'll be pretty decent if we look at these two points and just see if we can come up with a pattern that fits here. So going over 1 from x is 1 to x is 2, right? 
So when x is 1, x is 2, uh, our y values are 2 and then negative 10. So what did you have to multiply there? Well, basically, right, we are multiplying that by negative 5. Multi that says x negative 5. Just think multiplying by negative 5. I don't know a way to write that any better. Um, and so that's not really... Um, you know what's actually happening in our equation here if I just left a as negative so I did negative and then I did 2 sorry give me a minute because I'm just hey Josh I'm gonna change it in attendance in a second I'm just looking things through I don't I would rather not do a um, a K or D value I'm just trying to think if we need to We could, we could. Um, obviously we just need a negative five there because um, that's also what we're multiplying it by, right? Um, so basically our y values, instead of just multiplying by 2, uh, we're multiplying by negative 5. So I would need to um, basically have an a value of negative 5 over 2. Now I just want to see if that works because we might have to think ourselves through a little bit better here. So let me erase that. Go negative 5 over 2, 2. And then I'm just going to write x plus, and I'm going to forget about k and d because k is a horizontal stretch, which is a little bit ugly. Um, and then uh, D, I'm going to see if I don't need to shift it left and right. Let's just see what happens as I put in uh, C is equal to 6 here. So uh, what happens then if I put in my X value? So if I put in X is 1, right? So I'm going to get Y equals to negative 5 over 2 times 2 to the 1 plus 6. Uh, that's going to be Y is equal to negative 5 plus 6. So Y is equal to 1. Is that what I needed? It was the point 2, 1. Uh, oh, sorry, my brain just, when I put it, sorry, when I put in X is 1, ooh, I got 1 there for my value. I didn't want 1, did I? I wanted 2. So clearly I need to do something uh, a little bit different. Hmm. Maybe they want me to estimate that point a little better. It's tough because those points are so nasty. It might actually have been easier for us to Do something like that. Let me just, sorry guys, I'm thinking my way through this one. I'm gonna shift everything back one and pretend that there is a, a D value. We could solve for a D value. I just thought I would try and do it this way first. So I'll see if I can explain it a different way in a second here. Uh, so I know that I'm going to have, sorry, this is just me thinking through things, guys. 2 uh, plus 6, 2 to the x. This would have been um, negative 2 times 2 to the x. Uh, and then I want to actually uh, shift that to the right one. Uh, so I'm going to go x minus 1. Let's see if that works. So if I put in x is 1, this would be negative 2 times 1 minus 1, so it would be 2 to the 0. Uh, plus 6, no, that's going to give me 4. I want 1, 2. Okay. Well, let's keep trying. Sorry, team. This one is harder than I thought. I think I might be overthinking things. I 
Okay, we'll just try and solve for a D then. I'm going to erase that gray function. negative 2 to the x plus 6 uh, and it's going to be too hard if I make it I'd love to know what the heck if I just assume that is at 5 it doesn't look to be though does it does it look like it's halfway to you maybe maybe if I erase that dot maybe let's just pretend it is just to see if that makes our life easier so if that is the point zero five that means it would go up one uh oops no that can't be because then it goes up one uh up to four and then up uh, what is that is that 16 six and ten oh maybe this will work I think here we go so basically to me that looks like if I was to graph this function uh, this looks like it's kind of like 4 to the x, kind of. Because if I look, oh, it goes 1, 4, 16. That kind of makes sense. And that's really the same thing as 2 to the 2x. Um, it, oh, sorry, you probably can't see that. So if I'm looking here, I think I go negative 2 to the 2x plus 6. Uh, so let's see if that works. Let's see if that works. So. Uh, now let's try our points again, right? So let's try one. So we're going to get negative two to the exponent one plus, oh, sorry, uh, negative two to the exponent two times one. Remember that's inside it like that. So it'll be negative four plus six, right? And negative four plus six, sorry, this is F at one. Negative four plus six is two. So that's perfect. Uh, and then if we do F at two, uh, then what we would get, we'd hope to get negative 10, right? So f at 2, um, when I look there, uh, that is going to be negative 2 to the exponent. Sorry, that's not the right equation up there. That's going to confuse us. Remember, it's to the 2x. So 2 times whatever your 2 is uh, plus 6. So that's going to be negative 2 to the exponent 4. Uh, and negative 2 to the, uh, so 2 to the exponent 4 is uh, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, 16. So negative 16 plus 6, which would be negative 10. And that's where we're supposed to get it. Bingo. Okay, good. All right. Let me explain how I came up with that because I don't think I did a very good job. I was trying to think things through and I think I was overthinking things. I was hoping that we didn't have to do a K value, but K is nasty. That one is a bit of a tough question. Um, well, it's, it's a lot more than a tough question, but if you guys got that, good for you. But let's go through. I'm just going to show you Desmos. So here's the reason I knew it was 4x, 4 to the x. Uh, first of all, let's just do 2 to the x. Sorry, 2 to the x. Turn that on projector mode. So you guys could see basically our pattern there was right. You're going up 1. And then over one, up two, and up four, right? Because two to the zero is one, two to the one is two, two to the two is four. So I was like, all right, over basically over one, up two, over two, up four. But that's not the pattern we see in this graph, even if it's flipped upside down, right? If we take 
we take this graph here and let's go to that add six to make it so our horizontal asymptote's at six, and then just like we thought, we thought it had to have been flipped upside down, so I'll make it negative there. So even if we just look at that, let's just also graph our asymptote y equals six, like this. Um, it doesn't have the exact same pattern, right? Because from what I saw, if I'm gonna compare these two graphs here, uh, it looks like to me, and I just wish, let's just turn the steps on so that they are two, so they're the exact same on the y-axis here. Uh, and I'm just going to zoom in so that way you guys can see a little bit better there. Okay. Uh, so, oopsie, sorry. You can see that that red line, uh, or theirs is blue. Here, let's change the colors of these things too to be what I did. Orange, and then this one was a blue. So that way you guys can really compare. Um, and uh, basically, you can see it looks similar but look let's look so it goes through at five just like this one does that makes sense except here like if we go over uh where is one one is right here one we're at four whereas over here we're not at four right we're down here at two um and so basically instead of going down one and then here it goes over one right so these are i'll, I'll just make my steps look a little more clear sorry on the x-axis we'll go by two as well that way you guys can see. So instead of when we go here, I think it's better with ones, but I just wanna compare with you guys. Um, so that way you can see, let's turn out these freaking grid lines. They get confusing. Right, you can see in here, uh, this thing goes down when we were, we're at four, we're going down two. But over here, right, when we're at x equals one, we're not going just down two to four, we're going down four. So it's like, dang, that's more like the pattern negative two to the exponent, sorry, negative four to the exponent x plus six, right? It's more like that. And you can see that looks exactly right. Um, if I'm looking here at my points, I can go down here and I can see two, negative 10, right? Two comma, negative 10. And that point is on there, that's perfect. Let's label that sucker so you can see that, right? So there's the point two, negative 10, that's on there and that's on this blue graph. That's the one I really want, right? Let's change those colors up now. I want this to be blue and let's just make this one some sort of like, I'm thinking and I'm thinking in green or some crap. Anyways, the blue is the one that we want. And so you can see here, yeah, it has the point two, negative 10. And it also has the point one, two, right? If I'm gonna graph also, I'm gonna graph that point one, two on there. Let's just label that as well. So you can see that point is on there. But the green one, you know, it's just at negative two, so it's not really gonna work. So I would love to have the base four, but you know, I can't really get that base four uh, just with that, I, I would change things. So I'd make that four is the same thing as two squared right, two squared, uh, sorry, I'm trying to, two squared to the exponent x, and that, right, when we have two exponents here, you just multiply that x times two, so that'd be two to the exponent two x, and now that, when I put my brackets in, that blue one should be exactly what we want, right? And it goes through there still, negative two to the exponent two x. Hey, Max. So anyways, sorry that was a bit of a butcher of an explanation, um, but yeah, definitely uh, one that's a little bit hard. I was hoping we would use an A value, but it uh, looks like we needed a K value instead. Really what's happening, right? This was, if you if you drew this one out on top, you could have also drawn this one and go, oh, I need to horizontally compress it, right? Um, it was out here, this is just negative two to the x plus six, I need to horizontally compress it to get to this point. And then here, I'd also need to horizontally compress that. Okay, uh, sorry, just got a Teams message here. Just got a message from someone that said, isn't it supposed to be negative two, two to the X plus six? Well, if I graph negative two, dang, sorry, one sec. 
negative two, two, two to the exponent x plus six, you can see it doesn't go through the same points, right? It, it, it goes through this point one, oops, sorry, this point one, two here, but it doesn't go through down here, it doesn't go through that point two, negative 10. So it doesn't do the exact same thing. Um, it doesn't get to where you wanted it to be from where we looked. So not exactly right. Uh, I'm just gonna adjust my attendance uh, while I let you guys look at that for a second. Yeah, Cam, I think, I think people are pretty bored, pretty bored. Uh, sorry, let me just adjust my attendance here. So I have seen, oh, that was Max Ho. Did I see Max Chen? Uh, where, I don't think I did. Uh, I do have Josh Daffy though. And I did get Yelda. Still no Kyle, still no Max. Um, yeah, that one's just all about transformations. I guess probably the easiest thing if I were you guys, I would have maybe looked at some specific points or drawn on here, like in your textbook, if I was to restart this. The things you know for sure Let's just erase all of this. Maybe I'll do one more shot at explaining this and then I can move on. If we're looking here, right? I know that I should have some sort of asymptote here. I do know that it's gonna be some sort of like, I'm trying to make two to the X, but I know it's gonna to have to be like negative, right? So it's gonna be flipped upside down. So what would that look like if I was to just have my two X, which normally goes up one, then over two, then over four, right? It would look something like this and it'd be at a half. So that would normally just be two to the X. Hey Max. Uh, so basically, right, instead of, you know, that being positive two to the X, let's just flip that. So it would follow the asymptote instead of being up here, right? And if we follow the same pattern, you know, it goes up one and over two, then up four, it'd be like this. I'm just gonna flip that. Uh, and so we go down one and then down uh, uh, two and then down, oh, let me draw that, sorry. Four, and then I go down again. Uh, and let's go, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, uh, oh, yeah. oh, sorry. I should be going over one. I messed this whole graph up. It's because the scale is so freaking weird. When you're doing this, right, should have a Y intercept at one, and then you go over to one here. This is why I'm getting confused. Uh, and then you go up to two, and then two would be four. So it's more like that than what I had originally. So if we shifted that whole thing up, right, you go over one, you go up two, and then over two, and then up four, my bad. So flip that stupid thing. All right, let's erase that again. Uh, and so then you're gonna come along here and you're gonna go over one, down two, over two, down four. All right, now we're, we're in the game here. So this graph here is we've only reflected it and we've done two to the X and we've added six. So those are reflections or transformations. And so basically you're just going, okay, what is the transformation to get this black line to this one here? Well, it looks to me like it's a horizontal compression by a half. I could even go up to the next one, right? What's four times two would be eight. So I go over one more tick to three and I'd be going down eight, right? So it's at six, it'd be at negative two here. Half of that. And I could even go uh, another one over times two again. It'd be down um, uh, 
not eight, but 16. So at four, we'd be going down 16. So it'd be at negative 10. And you can see that's half again. So it looks like we need to horizontally compress this thing by two to get the, uh, shoot. I cannot draw. to get the transformation we wanted. So that's definitely a tough question. And now I gotta fix max as well. Okay, sorry, let me just find max. Again, goes for Max and others. Make sure you are letting me know when you do show up in class because uh, I need to mark you here. Mm. All right, so we're just missing Kyle. That is it. Alrighty, so sorry about that. Took me a while to get that sucker done. Good question, Paul. That's a tough one for sure. I'm hoping uh, 10B was a little bit easier than that one. Um, hopefully, to give that a shot. Didn't have many questions. Only one person asked for 10A. So that does not make me think highly of people trying 10B. But anyways, it's all good. It's all good. Um... Let's uh, let's look at uh, today. We're on to our last uh, like note here today, um, which would have been 4.7. Uh, and so basically, what I'm gonna have you guys do uh, is we're just gonna we're gonna do a couple quick questions, things kind of like what we've seen before, just a couple application questions um, that you might have seen in grade 10 as well. Um, but we're gonna do a little bit of solving from that. Just how do you solve for time? And this is where that log thing is gonna come into play, where we're gonna use that log skill because it'll be a little bit easier to solve um, with that than it is to just guess. So we'll do that. Uh, and then uh, obviously uh, you could have also seen if you're looking in your notes right now, I sent you something where I gave you this review package with some skills and vocabulary you need to know, uh, as well as uh, this review sheet uh, as well. Uh, now, don't do this right now uh, and over the weekend. I just know some people are crazy, but I'd rather you guys get off screen and off math this weekend. Uh, but I am going to give you like basically my version of what it would be a... Uh, a test. Now it won't be just like the classic test. Um, things are going to be stripped down a little bit. I'm going to do that uh, electronically. I'm going to do that through uh, Microsoft Forms. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I don't like how the Edsby thing uh, doesn't necessarily straight up work all the time. So might do things a little different, um, but uh, we'll see what I get over the weekend. I'll give you more details about what that's going to look like uh, on. Uh, on Monday, but we're gonna do a little quiz on Monday. Um, so I'll send that to you then. Uh, and then we'll do our review on Tuesday and then we'll do uh, a bit of a test. I'm sure it won't take the whole time. Like it's online and there might be problems. And so I don't wanna have it like uh, be the most stressful thing in the world, but uh, that will be something that will uh, count for marks. And we're gonna try and hash that out and see how that works together. Um, so please make sure you are on time for class uh, every day, but yeah, definitely on that Wednesday. Um, probably be some sort of like timed activity, uh, that thing as well. If you cannot make it on Wednesday, shoot me a message and let me know if you got some family thing going on, uh, or it's not a good time for you, or, uh, you've experienced some internet problems. You've already, I don't want to hear that day that you're experiencing internet problems. That's a little suspicious, but, uh, you know, if you've got, you know, that morning and you can't get to any of your classes and your internet's down, you know, and you just tell me period, uh, two, you're like, Oh, 10, 15, it's not working. Anyways, let me know, period one kind of thing. Uh, you, you should have some heads up on that. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll give uh, give a bit of time for you guys to try some things and, and whatnot. It's not supposed to be stressful. It should be a good chance for you to, to show me what you know. Um, we had that quiz. You guys did pretty well on that. So I'm thinking this unit's going okay. 
Hey, Kyle. Welcome. Welcome. Guess what? That means I get to adjust the attendance for like the fifth time. Attendance. Who's ready for the weekend? I'm ready for the freaking weekend. Let's rock and roll. No, no worries, Kyle. Sorry, that was probably overly sassy of me, wasn't it? Uh, I'm just messing around. Uh, it's been a long week. Every uh, uh, It'll be on Wednesday, Paul. Uh, Wednesday. I will post it in Edsby. Yeah, anyways. Uh, every day my dad was here, so I... I'd like work all day uh, and teach and then my brain would just be like exhausted by the end of the day. You know, you talk for so long, um, but uh, then the day ends and then I would go work with my dad uh, on my house trying to get it ready for Mr. DeGelder to move in. Um, I don't know, David. I don't know which is the right uh, pronunciation of that. So let me do a couple easy, quick questions with you guys. Um, easier than that 10A, let me tell you. Uh, let's just say a question like that 10A. Uh, I could ask you to give me transformations of 2 to the X, but that one's a little bit harder. That one had three transformations. That's too hard. And I hate, I hate horizontal compressions. They're the worst. So uh, do not expect something like that on your test. Uh, that one is a little bit harder. I was hoping it'd be some sort of A, you know what I mean, uh, where it's been it's been stretched. Okay, well, I'm uh, I'm gonna kick power for the people. They go. I don't know who the heck that was, but I apologize for banning you. Uh, all right. So uh, we're on 4.7. Uh, that was just a little warm up. So just a couple quick things, guys. Um, if you remember, we did a day where we kind of did some stuff like this. You guys all have this note, by the way. Are we good to move on? Sorry for probably murdering some of your brain cells. Can we shake our heads a little bit and just get back to some little bit of easier math? A little bit of easier math. Give me a thumbs up or something like that if you're good to go. And you're, uh, the tears can stop. Yeah, no power for the people, Liam. Forget that. Stop. Thumbs up from Daniel. All right, I got one person with me. That's good. Jerry's got the cat. Cam says easier math in a very sassy SpongeBob meme kind of way. Kyle's with me. Zoe's with me. Are we playing Half-Life in math class? Yes, we are. We are, sir. So we'll see how that goes. Um, okay. Uh, remember, and this is back to like the first day that we talked about exponential growth and decay. Do you remember like in terms of all of our transformations... Yeah, I got lots of thumbs up. All right, we're alive. All right, let's do this. I've got energy. I've got an orange. Life is good. Back to being energetic. Yeah, peel the freaking orange. Let's go, baby. Do some math. I love math. I love math. And I love oranges and vitamin C. Who needs vitamin C pills when you've got an orange? Let's freaking go. What was what we were doing? Yeah, it was just a homework. Mm-hmm. Mm. Not a lot of orange. Okay. Do you remember this formula when we said the amount of something, whoa, I'm zip. The amount of something is equal to the initial amount, so what you started with, 
What? Mr. Bent is riding a skateboard in his class and Mr. Ellis is playing with his food. Yeah, sorry. Bent is, Mr. Bent rode a skateboard? That is awesome. Anyways, uh, you start with your initial amount, right? The initial amount here. And then you've got some base to the X. And remember, B is like that rate of change. And if it's bigger than 1, it's increase. If it's between 0 and 1, like a fraction, then it is uh, then it's decrease. It's going down. Um, so basically, uh, we're going to have our final amount and A0. Remember, that was like your initial amount. What do we start with? So just as a little reminder, if we have something like this, it was exponential decay. That marker is thicker than me after two weeks of quarantine and not really spending too much time outside. Uh, and B is greater than one is exponential growth. Boom, baby. All right, let's do this thing. So there's something called Half-Life and Ben's saying that's a game and that's true, that is a great game. Um, Half-Life 3 confirmed. But basically, uh, Half-Life is like, how long does it take something to get to its, uh, to half of its original amount? Now, obviously, that only works in exponential decay, right? It's if something is going down. And it's typically a scientific word um, used for things like, uh, you could talk about the half-life of like, say, uh, COVID-19 on a surface, okay? So scientists would use that. So if I went out and I coughed on this tin here, and I left it outside and when we're trying to figure out when is it safe to touch, something like that. Well, I think, I don't remember what they're saying, but on paper, it's like 24 hours. And somebody was saying like on surfaces, like it could be even up to like six days possibly. So the bacteria or the virus on there has a life, right? It's dying um, until it, it it's no longer uh, a thing. And so typically, uh, sometimes in, in science, things are compared with a, with a half-life as well. Not just like their full life, which in that case... Um, is but they're given a half life. So how long does it take for that thing to half um, every time? Half its initial population, um, and so uh, and, and then it would half the next whatever how many hours? It's just a, it's just like okay, we've got half of what we got in here, and then you have this amount now, and you know because things change, new bacteria is added. So it's interesting to look at as new bacteria is added or new things come into the mix. Uh, half of that initial amount. We can also deal with that with dodo birds and things like that. So we're looking at half-life as a time. It's how long it takes for something to get to half its amount. So this question here are dodo birds. Remember, you guys, we did dodo birds before. I could Google dodo birds, but you guys remember they're basically like the little weird things that don't fly and they're really dumb. And they walk up to the people on the island and get barbecued. Um, I'd have mine with dinosaurs. Remember the little Diana sauce? Mm, delicious. I'm out of Diana sauce. I got to go get more. I've been having chicken fingers with plum sauce. I mean, I'm having salad. Uh, anyways, we're going to write an equation to model the dodo birds. Uh, this one, the, we're adding something new to it today. It's not just the same thing because it says estimate the half-life. We're going to actually calculate the half-life in a second. So let's rock and roll. Uh, typically, your formula is A equals your initial amount. And then you'd have this half. It's, it's multiplying itself by a half. For every time, like if this was exponent one up here, it'd be half the initial population, right? So H on the bottom, that represents how long it takes. That is the half-life, and normally it's in years, and then X would be the number of years. So basically, how does this formula work? If I started with a thousand bacteria, and I multiply it by a half to the one, that would be half of its initial population, right? It would be down to 500. So if the half-life, if that takes it, two years or whatever we could use, doesn't have to be years, could use days. If it takes two years or two days, then this X, when it's equal to two days, that means it'll go down and it'll multiply by half, right? Half to the two over two is one. Or if time is four, right? If we had four days, well, four divided by two, which was our half-life, that means it would have happened twice because in four days, that's two periods of it multiplying by a half. Ooh, look at that. I did pretty good with my little Spock thing. Um, so it'd be twice, or uh, you put in times four, so it'd be multiplying it by a half twice. Um, so let's actually just see how that formula plays out. So if we do have 500 dodo birds, forget about the half-life formula for a second. Let's do things how we initially did, and then in a minute, we're going to deal with our half-life formula. So there's 500 birds on an island, uh, and 20% of them die each year due to their own stupidity. Well, remember... If we're dealing with the formula, because we don't have half-life, right? We, it doesn't tell us that. We're going to learn that. So I'm actually going to make this marker less thick. 
if we look at y equals a0 times b to the x here, well, our initial amount, right, this was our a0. This 20%, that's how fast they are dying. So remember, we want to know how many percent of them are left. And that means that basically you could go, well, multiplying them by 1 stays the same. We need to subtract 20% every year. So we're going to be multiplying these things by 0 0.8 or 80%. So basically, we're going to get something, and we're writing an equation to model the population. Our population, or I should say A, sorry, let's stick with our actual formula, A or our amount, is going to equal that initial amount, so 500 times 0 0.8 to the x. Perfect. Okay. So what we're trying to do, and I'm going to give you guys a minute to ask a question or uh, to copy this down. So I'm just going to pause for a second. Give me a thumbs up when you're ready to rock. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to see when is this population half of that. Half of 500 would be 250. So as you guys are writing that down, pause. And maybe some of you, if you're already caught up with me, can try that. What would be the x? See if you can estimate it or see if you can actually calculate it exactly. We have done some questions like this before. Sorry, that was a yawn, fools. Uh, Batten, we are multiplying by 0 0.8 because the dodo birds, 20% of them are dying every year. So that means 80% of them are left. If I multiplied by 0 0.2, you'd have 500 times 0 0.2 it would be a very small amount. It would be actually like 20% of them are living. So if I multiply them by 1, it means it stays the same, right? 500 times 1, oh, 500 times another one, 500. It doesn't change. So we're trying to take it so they don't change. And we're subtracting, killing 20% of them. So taking away 0 0.2. Hopefully that makes more sense. Uh, ben, I have no idea what the crap that is. So I'm not going to even say it out loud. But I'm not sure. It's probably fine. Batten's giving me a thumbs up. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So let's see. Uh, in order to solve this one, I'm going to go 250 equals 500 e times 0 0.8 to the x. Sorry, I'm fumbling my words. Uh, so we're going to divide the 500 by both sides. So 250 over 500 would be 0 0.5 equals 0 0.8 to the x. Now, if you wanted, this is all you are technically supposed to do in grade 11. You basically would take out your calculator here. And I would go 0 0.8 to the exponent, like something like 3, right? So if I do 0 0.8 to the 3, I don't know if you guys can see that, I get 0 0.512. That's pretty good, right? I wonder if I could even get closer than that. That's pretty darn close. So if I want to go 0 0.8 to the exponent 3.1, if I go to the exponent 3.1, if I just go up a little bit, right, then I get a number that's pretty close. Now, I tried... You know, see, I get 0 0.500. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close. So um, I think estimating at 3.1 is basically as good as we're going to get, even if we calculated this. I'm going to remind you guys how to calculate this, but I just tried three. That was a guess. You could try one. Obviously, it's not going to be one. That'd be 0 0.5 equals 0 0.8. But maybe try two, try three, and you just keep guessing numbers until you get something pretty close. And that's all is expected of you in grade 11. So it's approximately... 3.1. If you wanted to be more exact, remember, and Zoe, you're totally right. Yeah, we're going to try that log button. And I just want to remind people how to use that. So I'm going to write it over here. If you have something like A equals B to the X, and that's kind of what we have. Oh, Batten, if you have an Android, uh, the app itself, here, I'll show you the app, uh, is called Wabbit. Let's see. Wabbit Mew. And it's a graphing calculator, actually. It's like a full-on um, TI-84 graphing calculator where you can graph and plot and do everything. But it's kind of like a... Desmos is actually a little bit better for graphing anyways because it's faster. This is kind of annoying, but...
Uh, anyways, Zoe's totally right, the log button, because right now we have some number equals some number to the x, right? So how do we get this? Well, basically what we're gonna do is you're gonna say that x is equal to log of the one that's on its own, so be log a divided by log b. So in this case, what does that look like? You're gonna do log, oopsies, I'm, whoa. Holy. Sorry, my whole thing just like, you guys with me? My screen just went black and it zoomed in like crazy. That was epic. So log, holy. People are so bored. I'm getting Snapchats. I never get Snapchats. Uh, log, I shouldn't say that. It sounds so lovely. <laughs> I just don't use Snapchat. I hate it. It's dumb. Uh, log 0 0.5 divided by log 0 0.8. And if you type that in, right, if I go back to my calculator, I'm going to use, because you can use Desmos too, right? It's totally fine. If we go uh, and you hit to get in Desmos, you hit the little functions and you should be able to hit the log button somewhere. Sorry, miscellaneous. Yeah, it's in miscellaneous. I don't know how well you guys can see that. But I went and I hit functions and then I hit mis misc, miscellaneous. And then you should be able to hit the log, which is right there. Can you guys, I'm trying to show you, sorry. There-ish, the next one, yeah, right there. So I'm going to hit log. Uh, and so, sorry, I'm like being painful. I'm trying to show you guys. 0 0.85, right, divided by log 0 0.8. We already know what the answer is, but... Why not? And you guys can see, hopefully, see how well I do at showing this off. But if I type that in my calculator, I get 3.106. And that's a more exact answer. Coolio? Um, and so 3.11-ish. Right? Cool. Uh, that's an awfully bright window you got there, Mr. Ellis. Okay. Uh, I think, I think we're good with that. You guys cool with log? You guys cool with that solving bit? That's kind of what we're doing today is we're gonna either use so uh, log or use your calculators to solve. I'm going to show you something from grade 10 that you would not have been able to do financially speaking. I think people have probably got that down now, now that I've all finished writing that. Hopefully, if not, you can pause. Oh, that hair is wacko. Here. Uh, oh, sorry. We're not totally done. We're not totally done. So that means, right, if we... I forgot what we were doing. I'm getting too carried away. Uh, this is telling us that the dodo bird population... Dod, dod, dodo, population, half-life, so how long it takes to go half of its original life, is 3.11 years, okay? 3.11 years. Takes three years and I don't know how many months that is, 0 0.11 times 12. Just less than two less than one and a half even. So 3.11 years. So in our equation up here, H is the half-life time. So that means that when we put it into a new equation, H is equal to 3.11. That is our half-life. So it says rewrite an equation. So a new equation for the same problem, same dodo bird population. They're dying, they're dying, they're dying. Let's actually open, <laughs> they're dying, they're dying, they're dying. Uh, oops, sorry, I have a Teams message here. Uh, I just had, um, uh, oh, okay, I have a couple questions. Um, one says, hi, Mr. Ellis, what are you supposed to do with the zero under the A? Let's just answer those quickly, sorry, and then I'll get to this. Uh, remember, this zero is not a number. This zero is simply just saying it's the amount when the time is zero. So this whole thing, 
you just say it's the initial amount. So that zero is not a number. I know it is kind of, but it's just, you know, the starting amount. So the whole thing's 500. And then I had a second question that says, where did the 0 0.5 come from? So that 0 0.5, it comes from, uh, when you're looking here, that's my bad. I probably went a little fast here, right? What I did is I divided both of these sides, right, by 500. Ooh, that's pretty thick. If you divide both sides by 500, these ones cancel out and 250 over 500 is equal to 0 0.5. So I get 0 0.5 equals 0 0.8 to the X. Basically we just taught the 500 to the other side. Those people that asked that question, does that make sense? Did I answer your question? If not, let me know. Sorry, I was a little delayed. Sometimes Teams does not give me a notification until I click it. You can see where I've always hated Teams from the beginning. Um, sorry, okay, so where did we get to then? I was talking about half-life, yeah. Um, so if we look at the equation that we started with, that 500 times 0 0.8 to the x. It's just, sorry, I gotta close all these things down. Uh, 500 times 0 0.8 to the x. All right, so there's our dodo bird population. You can see they're pretty well dead after, I don't know, it's been about 30 years, right? 30 years, they're pretty well all gone. Um, at 20 years, it looks like we've got about 10 left, that sort of thing. So I'm trying to find a new equation where instead of using, you know, we still have 500 at the start, but instead of using 20% die every year, I want to use somehow, I want to have it so it's like half of them die and obviously I can't just have to the exponent X here. Sorry, I should write this as like 0 0.8 to the exponent X outside. So that way you guys see that these things are changing. So this half, clearly those are not the same. But if I say no, 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 because that means that they die, a half dies. This what it, this says is 80% of them, or sorry, 80% of them survive or 20% of them die every one year, right? When X is one. And that makes sense. But here it's not half of them die every year because X is in years. Basically, I wanted everyone to die every, oopsies. Sorry, I don't want anyone to die. Every, not one year, but 3.11 years. And you can see that as soon as I make that X divided by not just one, because that would be like, okay, half of them die every year. Just like here, this is 20% of them dying every year. But here, right, if I'm dealing with this, it's not half of them die every year because I'm trying to make the same situation. I'm trying to make it so half of them die every, sorry, every time I say that, I kind of Google. Uh, half of them die every 3.11 years. And why does that make sense? Well, if I put in, if we call this f at x right there, and if I think about like f of one, right? Well, what's happening? We're gonna do 500 times 0 0.8 to the exponent one. So 20% of them died in that one year. If I do, okay, well, this thing to the exponent up here, let's do five uh, F of three, right? Okay, now we're down to like 256. So we're almost down to halfway, right? F at two, we had 320, right? So more of them are dying, F at three. And if I do F at 3.11, somewhere in there, right? This function up here at 3.11, we're pretty well down. I know it's a bit rounded, but we're down to half the population. And that's at this, this percentage dying, but we've, we've redone this equation so that we're saying, okay, the rate is, is the same. There's, it's still the same population, same dodo birds. We're just coming up with another equation to graph this. Same, same sort of scenario, but we're saying, okay, half the population is not dying every one year, like in this case, that's 20% of them dying every year, but how do I make half of them die at the kind of a similar rate? How do we adjust it? So it's obviously not 20% dying every year, but it's a half of them dying every 3.1 years, 3.11. And so I, if I call this one G, G, G of X. And if I just type in, in this case, G of one, Oh, sorry, G of 3.11. Uh, we'll still get a very similar situation, right? 
So we get have up here. That's going to be the thing to make this part equal to one. So it takes 3.11 years. We're getting the same thing. And we should be able to, for any of these things, right? If I do uh, three even, let's just do three to keep things simple. It'd be 256. And this one should be approximately 256 as well, like close to that. Uh, so they're very similar, even though we rounded that 3.11. When I put in the values here, eight, eight, they're a very similar graph, right? Very close, as close as you could possibly get uh, with rounding. I'm just checking my team's messages as well. All right, I just had somebody say that uh, I answered their previous question. So what the heck are we doing? Let me recap that because we're getting a little lower on our time. Basically, all we've done so far, we sorry, we did the half-life of the dodo birds, and we're going to write that in a second here. Um, if we look, we're just saying in terms of our, we're just reusing this half-life formula here. So we used our original formula, but now we're thinking about half-life. I said the half-life, this little h, in this case is 3.11 years, right? So our new formula, do it in black, a0, so we still start with 500. And instead of that 0 0.8, we're saying a half times x over what would be your 3.11. Now, the original formula that we had that we said looks pretty well the same was 500 times 0 0.8 to the exponent x. And this down here, when it says how many dodo birds will be left after five years, well, basically, the reason that I ask you that is that I'm proving to you that if you put in five for either one of these equations, five over 3.11, or here a equals 500 times 0 0.8 to the exponent five, put in five for x in either one, you should get the same thing. And that can be proved here, uh, just putting in five. And we don't even, we can just use this as our calculator, right? So let's put in five and put in five. And we're going to get 164, right? This one rounds up to 164, and this would be 164. So approximately 164. So what are we doing? We're coming up with another equation that looks very similar, basically looks the same. <coughs> Sorry. Basically, dogs barking outside. Basically, looks the same, but we're um, utilizing the idea of half life instead. We're just doing a different rate of change. Before, we found basically what changes when they when we take the question when it says uh, twenty percent are dying every year, and then over here we're talking about its half life. It's different rate of change, which means our exponent needs to stay, stay the same. Basically, it's a k value. We're compressing it. Uh, five here, buddy. It's just, it's from this question, Kyle. It's just saying how many dodo birds are left after five years. That's where I got that five from. All right. So we just got 10 minutes left, probably due to the fact that, uh, the start of class was that gong show question. <laughs> uh, sorry about that one. That 10 a, that was crazy. Uh, so this one, I'll just start you off with this one because there isn't a whole lot of time. Um, but basically, um, you've got $1,000 uh, and you're saving up. So this isn't decay. We're not going to be doing half-life here. This is just something where we've got money. And I just want to show you how money and interest rates um, can basically uh, be calculated using our uh, rate of change formula because ex money and interest goes exponentially. Um, basically, you think about it like this. Uh, there's two different kinds of interest. There's simple interest. Um, and basically simple interest is like, okay, I've got $100 in the bank, 5% interest. That'd be $5, right? $5. That'd be a pretty high interest rate. But every month you get $5. And the next month you get another $5. That's not how banks work, right? It seems like you guys get this minus, uh, sorry, little tiny percent uh, of your money every month and it's always changing. And that's because it depends on how much money is in your bank. 
So doesn't it make sense that like if the bank gave you $5 after that first month, so you had 100, 5% interest, you get 105. Doesn't it make sense you get 5% of that new 105? That'd be a little more than $5, right? And it'd be building every time. So you should get more and more money, the more money you have in there. Um, and that's how it does work. It's not that good. The interest rates are not nearly that high. Um, but I'm just saying that's that's how it does uh, how it does work. So um, here, if we're going to write an equation to basically model this, um, what we're doing is we're actually getting bigger. So if we think about our, remember our formula is A equals A0, that initial amount, times B to the exponent X, right, our base. Uh, well, our initial amount is $1,000. That's how much you're going to start with. But what is B? So remember before I said when we did the 20% are dying, I said basically you're going to do 1 minus like the death rate. So it was like we were subtracting 20% of them and that left us with 80%, 0 0.8, right? Every time we were getting lower and lower. So that gets rid of things. It's killing things. We're not decaying here. It should be bigger than 1, right? Basically what's happening is if I just multiplied by $1,000 by 1 every month, 1,000 times 1 would be 1,000. And then 1,000 times 1 would be 1,000 again. Nothing is changing, right? So why don't we add the interest rate to that, right? If you think of like 5% of uh, 1,000, you'd have 20, I believe. Yeah, 20. Um, sorry, uh, $20. Uh, and so, yes, my brain, sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay, good, $20. Um, and, uh, and so we want to be gaining $20. So if I just do 1,000 times 0 0.05, which is 5% as an interest rate or a decimal, then it would be just 20. But that's like, okay, whoa, what happened to the rest of my money? So what we want to do is not just do that, but we want to times this by one plus our interest rate. Okay, one plus our interest rate. So in this case, we would have one plus 0 0.05. One plus 0 0.05. So in here, we're gonna have 1.05 to the exponent x, and x is the number of years. And so does that work? Basically, I know if I'm thinking about my my x being my years, and then a being my amount of money, I should start at zero years, I should have $1,000, right? And after one years, we know that we gain $20, so I should have 1,020. Oh yeah, sorry, I don't know what the heck is wrong with me. 1,050, thanks Josh, dot, 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 awkward. That makes more sense. My bad. I don't know where I'm getting the 20 from. I think my brain is uh, weekend fried. So anyways, 1,050. Um, so anyways, we should get that, right? Uh, so let's see, does our formula work like that? Well, if we put in X as one, you'd have 1,000 times 1.05 to the one. If you do times 1.05, you'll get 1,050. So it's perfect. All good. Thanks, Joshy. Thanks for the heads up. Um, how much money will be in the bank after eight years, right? Well, basically all you do is you take your, I don't know why I have A0 here. Sorry, I think it's because I changed my, uh, I was doing A0 is 1,000 and then it is tagged on the 1.05x. But anyways, A0 would be 1,000. So A is equal to 1,000 times 1 1.05 to the X. And it says X being eight years. Now I just have to calculate that. But it's not just 58 times because we're gaining, right? We're not... Basically, this one, you're basically timesing it by 1.05. And then we're not just adding 50, we're timesing this by 1.05. And we'd have to do that, right, because we're getting 5% interest on what the previous amount was. Um, and like if you had done this for two, right, if I do 1,050 times 1 1.05, I get 1,102. So our next one is $1,102.50. And that's better, right? We've got, we gained an additional $2.50. Normally it was like, oh, we gained 50. Do we gain 50 the next year? No, nope. turns out we gained uh, $52.50. So down here at eight years, what would it be if we did that, you know, eight times, where are we gonna end up at? Well, we just use our formula. It's gonna do your 1,000 times 1.08 to the exponent 8. Hello. Hello. Uh, we get $1,850. And 
93 cents. Ty, get off your phone. How creepy would that be if he was actually on his phone? It's not that creepy. I'm sure most of you are on your phone. But I was just thinking, I was like, I wonder if I could like call somebody out right now. And then be like, what the heck? Can he see me? Should have done on April Fool's Day. Creepy. Uh, okay, okay, okay. It's the weekend, team. It is 1131. Uh, I have a, a bunch of questions there. Let's not do all of those. Now, um, it is a time of review. Uh, let's just do like, let's just do like one maybe or something like that. I don't know. One or two of these suckers. Why not, eh? Um, give you guys something to do on the weekends. You don't have to though. Let's just see what it says. Uh, 261. I'd say some good ones to do would be. Ah, don't do number two. Sorry, did I make a mistake, Paul? 1,400, did I make 1,000 times 1.05 to the, maybe I made a mistake. Oh yeah, I don't know how I did that. Maybe I did to the exponent 18, I'm not sure. Thanks buddy, sorry about that. It's weird, I literally typed it in my calculator. Oh, 1.08, thank you. I don't know what's wrong with me. Point four six, then, right? My bad. Thanks, Paul. Okay, so um, I was just saying that I don't think number two is worth your time. Maybe just do uh, something like three, three and five, something like that. Give you a good chance of money, good chance. Of, whoa, hello, sorry, just dropped my laptop. Pretty weird. Uh, good chance of money, good chance of something else, something like that. So uh, should be good. Anyways, it is uh, eleven thirty-five. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of a low-key quiz deal. Sorry uh, on. Um, on Monday, and then remember the test will be on Wednesday. I will post that in Edsby, um, so that way you guys have some uh, reminder of that. But uh, yeah, uh, I will give you more input on what the test is going to look like in terms of what format as I come up with it over the weekend, because um, I'm not entirely sure. I've I've had some good luck with uh, Microsoft Forms, and I haven't had as much good luck with the Edsby thing based on you guys saying there's problems. A couple people said the inputs weren't as good, so. Microsoft Forms, I can still have it linked to your guys' accounts and everything like that. So it should be reasonable. Anyways, guys, I uh, hope you guys have a great weekend. Enjoy. Uh, relax. Don't do more math than those two questions. I don't think it's worth your time. Uh, the quiz is not going to count for Mark Yalda. It's just going to be like our typical quiz when I hand out some practice questions, give you guys some time to do it. I'll make some comments. Tuesday, we're going to do some review, and I'll meet with people one-on-one -on -one and help and things like that. Uh, and again, remember, I am available at 310 today. I do teach period three now, uh, but anyways, uh, 
uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have some time for questions at the end of the day. So all is good. Obviously, at the end of the day, Monday, Tuesday as well. But yeah, not counting for marks on Monday. The test on Wednesday or whatever I have that as, it could just be a... No, Liam. Uh, yeah, no, just uh, don't worry about math. Don't worry about anything. How about you don't worry about anything? How about you try that? Um, but yeah, don't... Uh, I would just do those two questions for homework. But anyways, you guys have a great day. Sorry my lesson sucked today. Um, you guys are great. But uh, clearly I was not today. Sorry I made a bunch of mistakes. Sorry I screwed up number 10. Uh, you guys are beauties though. Appreciate you uh, for listening and sticking around. Have an awesome one. Keep it real. Thanks, y'all. You too, Zoe. Have a great weekend. See you, Jerry. Thanks, Cam. Appreciate that. See you, Liam. See you, Joshy. See you guys. Thanks for saying bye. I appreciate that. See you, Daniel. <laughs> Big McThankies for McThankies. Uh, Liam, no, uh, there's no school till like May. I forget. Ask your dad. He's on the freaking board, bro. Uh, but it's like May 4th or something like that. Dang it. <laughs> you want to be back, eh? Yeah. The coolest giraffe. Yeah, pretty much, Kathleen. Pretty much. All right. See you guys.